F1 Manager 2022 launches on PC, Xbox and PlayStation over the coming days and I've been lucky enough to have my hands on it before that release to allow me to put together this game review for you. Hey everybody, my name's Ben, we are the Beard Guys and welcome to F1 Manager 2022. I've been a huge F1 fan since I was a kid and I've been incredibly excited about finally getting to play this game and to be able to make some videos for you. Hopefully my experience in following F1 one can help me give you some useful insights into this complicated but incredibly enjoyable game. I've got tons of F1 Manager content planned for YouTube and Twitch, so make sure you sub if you enjoy this review and want to catch all of our upcoming tips and tricks videos. All of the gameplay footage you'll see in this video is from the Xbox Series X version of the game, including footage of the menus, scouting system, parts development, and of course, qualifying and race day. I've also got another video of a full Bahrain GP up on YouTube with no commentary on it from me. So if you want to check that out as well, I'll put a link down below and up in the top corner. If you pre-order the digital version of F1 Manager 2022, you can get access to play the game from 3 p.m. BST on August the 25th. And for those who don't pre-order, the full release is on the 30th of August. So when you first load up F1 Manager, you'll be given the option of choosing any of the 10 teams currently in F1. You'll take on the role of team principal and have almost total control over all aspects of the team's career. Want to start as Haas and work your way up? No problem. Want to start as Ferrari and see if you can make better tactical decisions than they do in real life? Go for it. Want to start as Red Bull and immediately sack Max Verstappen and replace him with Latifi? It's all yours. Although they did make me pay a $60 million buyout fee and let's just say the board were not entirely happy with my decision making on day one of the job. You get 50 save slots, at least on Xbox, so presumably the same or more on PC, meaning that you can play around with all sorts of saves to try out whatever you want to do. Team performance initially seems to be based around the start of the 2022 season pretty well. I played through a few races as McLaren and their performance was pretty poor and they were struggling to get points for finishes without a bit of strategic luck or genius. This performance will change hugely though over both the season and multiple seasons as you develop the car. You can change and upgrade your facilities, research and design new car parts, change engine suppliers, hire and fire drivers, engineers, other key staff, as well as playing around with a frankly ridiculous amount of options. When I first started playing, even as a dedicated F1 fan, it was pretty daunting and a little confusing, so it's definitely going to be a dive in the deep end if you're a new or casual F1 fan. That said, the tutorial system in place to get you started, as well as the help menus available in game, do explain things pretty well if you have the patience to read them. The game tends to also highlight if there's important decisions you need to make and will kind of point you towards making one that's not completely terrible, though there's no pressure to follow their advice. My concerns about it maybe being a bit too complicated so as to be a turnoff disappeared, however, when I reached my first race weekend. The game allows you to take control of your practice and qualifying sessions, either manually or you can simulate through whichever ones you like to speed things along. You're able to choose what types of run your drivers will use in these sessions, when they will go out, how long they go for, on what tires, with what set up with how much fuel and honestly if I tried to list every option in this video it would go on for days. Suffice to say there is a huge amount of customization and interaction available to you throughout these pre-race sessions or if you prefer you can just sim through them. My plan was to smash through as many races as possible whilst I had early access to get some good information on the game to use to make content. However once I started my first race I ended up spending well over an hour just on one race, barely speeding up time at all. The controls for navigation through the vast amount of race information work very well on a controller, allowing you to switch the camera around between your two drivers or even drivers from other teams. You can pick your race strategies as well as change these on the fly, and you can also tell your drivers when to push, when to save fuel, when to deploy battery or save it up, and even when to let their teammates pass. There's also a ton of data available mid-race as you 
you might imagine, seeing delta times, tire life predictions, weather predictions, how much rubber is currently on the track, and a lot of other stuff too. The race spectator mode looks absolutely amazing for a manager game and can be watched at real time speed or sped up all the way to 16 times as well as paused. If you go to four times speed or above, then you have to watch from the bird's eye view, which is also a very useful view. Handily, the game will slow down for you when key events happen, and it will also give you the option to watch replays of important moments of action you might have missed, like overtakes by your drivers or crashes and spins by anyone on the track. You'll see dynamic weather, safety cars, virtual safety cars, and even red flag restarts. I had a full safety car on Jeddah after Sainz drove into the back of Leclerc and wiped him out when he was in first place in what can only be described as an incredibly Ferrari moment. I also had a full red flag on the same race after Ocon put himself into the barriers and ended up in the middle of the track, allowing us to change tires, tweak the cars, and have a full race restart. It's hard to overstate how much fun I had during the race day in this game. The level of detail is unbelievable. It almost felt like sitting down and watching a real F1 race. I felt so invested in it and was getting excited about every place gained, every possible opportunity, and being able to be in control of those critical decisions. The controls, graphics, and audio, including radio messages from the actual drivers, staff, and commentary team were all really well done and looked great and performed great on the Xbox Series X running at 1440p. The harder thing to judge about F1 Manager at the moment is how well it will hold up longer term, which just isn't something you can figure out in a few days. Usually in the old Football Manager games, I take a super low league team and gradually work them up through the divisions until Accrington Stanley had won five back-to-back -back Champions League titles, but F1 just has one division to play with. It'll be interesting to see how fun it is to play as one of the top teams when you know you have pretty much the best car on the grid already, but the concept of mid-season and post-season car development, as well as driver improvement over time, should hopefully keep things interesting. The choices you make around what facilities to upgrade and dedicate resources to will guide how quickly your drivers and staff improve and in what areas you can specialize in, all whilst having to keep yourself within a strict budget cap. Personally, I think it'll be the most fun taking a lower performing team and gradually bringing their facilities up to a high level, as well as using young drivers that you can nurture into real talent over the course of several seasons. You'll even get regulation changes that you can vote on mid-season and for new seasons, meaning you could suddenly find your car makes a jump or drop in performance. So in summary, do I think F1 Manager 2022 is worth it? Absolutely, but you do need to prepare yourself for the level of detail that is within the game if you aren't a big F1 nerd. As I mentioned earlier, the race day experience is incredibly enjoyable and the in-game help is sufficient to allow you to slowly learn how everything works, as well as often pointing you towards making sensible decisions to get you by whilst you learn. Or of course, you go completely rogue, hire Nicholas Latifi in for Max Verstappen and choose your own path through Formula One. It's a cloudy night tonight, but otherwise the weather looks good for the race. Looking at Sergio Perez. Starting in third place, they're in a really good position for this race. Next up for the team, it's Latifi. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. Everything's been building to this.